Are you fascinated by the paranormal and want to hear about encounters that have happened to real life people in real life places? Do you need a drink to calm those nerves after hearing some scary stories? You're listening to Booze and Bourbon. Well, we invite you to grab a drink, whether it's a coffee or something with a little bit more spirit in it. Grab a blanket, snuggle in, because I'm Kim and that's Jen, and we're Booze and Bourbon. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining Booze and Bourbon on a fun, different type of adventure. Jen and I got to do a live stream with paranormal investigator John Huntington. He was part of Dark Zone TV's live stream, Mm -hmm. all at the actual Conjuring House. Hey, everyone. John Huntington here at the Conjuring House. So John so graciously came to us for an interview from the actual conjuring house so he was sitting outside on the porch um we would have liked to have gone inside the house with him but there was actually a paying customer doing a ghost hunt in there so we didn't really want to mess with that being paranormal investigators ourselves we didn't want to mess up his flow so no what you're going to hear over the next 40 or so minutes the audio quality might bo- might not be exactly what you're used to, but the content is fantastic. Absolutely. The Conjuring is basically one of my favorite all-time scary movies. So mm-hmm. this is very exciting on so many levels. And I do also wish that we could have got a little, little sneak peek, I guess, at uh, things going on in there. And I can't wait to actually be able to go there ourselves. Me too. It's going to be so, a fun road trip, that's for sure. And, I mean, I'm just going to put that out, this out there, but I uh, did have a friend offer me her Ghostbuster Halloween costume. It was an actual rented <laughs> costume from the Ghostbusters movie. Yes. So I'm going to wear that, and <laughs> it comes with the uh, vacuum pack, the book bag with the ghost sucker on there. Stop So it. just in case we uh, run into anything, I'll... Uh, Dyson it right out of the building. That's amazing. And I just yeah. actually got a small handheld Dyson if you need to borrow that too. I might need the extra weaponry, really. <laughs> I mean, we don't know what's going to happen in there. So that's incredible. we need all the suction we can get. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, just after the break, you are going to hear our interview with John Huntington at the Conjuring House. So I keep hearing. It's awful dark in here. I can turn the light on. I keep hearing uh, noises out here. I just uh, I want to check it out, but I don't at the same time. <laughs> so. back and we have John Huntington with us. Thank you so much for joining us, John. John Huntington, who is a paranormal investigator, joining us from the actual Conjuring House. So, John, amazing. What is that like sitting outside of the Conjuring House right now? Oh, it's actually pretty peaceful. I'm sitting on the back porch. I don't know if anybody saw the back porch in the live stream or not, but um, yeah, it's really peaceful here. Okay. It's nice and Nice and cool. Would you rather be outside than inside right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it inside. I, I, I just love the house. Um, I okay. can't get enough of it. So it kind of draws me back every time I leave. Okay. Yeah, that is a question that I am definitely interested in asking you about the house and drawing people in. So um, John did a live stream. When was it? The beginning of May? Yeah, I believe so. It's kind of a blur now. So. Yeah, so it was um, put on by Dark Zone TV, and it was 24 hours a day, seven days a week, live stream, where there was, like, cameras set up mm-hmm. in so many different rooms in the house. And, John, you got to do a whole lot of experiments, and you've had some really cool things happen at the house, but you've also had some really crazy things happen at the house. Mm-hmm. Um, are you able to tell us a little bit about the house, like the history of the house itself? 
Uh, well, it was built in 1736 um, by the Arnolds and Richardson family. Um, it's gone through, I think, eight different owners since then. Wow. Um, yeah. And there's been document has been three different deaths um, here at the house. One was somebody who drank horse liniment. Um, oh. They weren't sure if it was a child or it's kind of it's kind of foggy at the age of the person that drank it and died. Uh, but two people died in the barn um, from exposure, where they got drunk and they just went to the barn and died from the cold. Uh, those are two documented ones that we know of. Um, plus, there was um, the King Philip's War was fought partially on this land, so there could be a lot of deaths from that as well. A lot of people think that's why it's so active here. That's that's pretty crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. especially since there's yeah. so many um, generations of different families living in the house, too. Um, and what's really cool is the Conjuring House was purchased by the Heinzen family just last year. And you're friends with the owners of the house. How did that all come about? I started uh, doing a uh, uh, spare box, like, when it first came out 10 years ago, I did EVPs and stuff like that at first in the spare box. And, um, Corey's friend, Brenda, um, had a ghost hunting team and I just kind of did things on my own. I didn't really think about showing a team, but she saw my videos and invited me to come up to, um, Rumford, Maine. That's where Corey's from originally. And, uh, the first night we were there, we had so much stuff happen. Um, we had a, spirit scream out loud twice for me when I asked them to. So after that, they kept inviting me to come back, and then Corey and I uh, became really good friends, traveled all over together, ghost hunting, and um, then uh, kind of became kind of like family. Um, once, uh, I get along great with his son and uh, his wife. We all get along really good, and he gets along good with I have an 18-year-old daughter. That We're just like one big family now. We've known each other so long. That's how, how I met Corey. That's awesome. Awesome. So I know she already touched on it, but back to your dark zone, the live stream that you had going on seven days a week, 24 hours a day. What happened to you during the live stream? Like, did can we fill our viewers in, I guess, on anything major that happened? Because obviously we both uh, witnessed some things, but to share with them, like, what would be the more monumental moments, I guess, that you had on the live stream? Paranormal or just from people? <laughs> uh, paranormal. We'll stick with that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, there's a spirit here that likes to swear a lot. And one night we're doing spare box here and they called me an F and faggot. And then, <laughs> wow. And then down, down the basement, I asked if it would, if you're down here to swear, to sw- say the F word. And I said it so loud, like I, I could almost feel it. Like, like it was in front of me. Wow. I said it so loud on the um, spare box. And then I thought, well, did everybody else hear that? And I'm like, well, there's 8,000 people watching. I hope somebody heard it. And then all of a sudden people are sending me memes of it. And, stuff, and I'm like, uh-huh. okay, they heard it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's wild. Um, I do recall an experiment happening at the dining room table and I, something happened with your nose. Can you fill us in on that? When I had a bloody nose. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a major part. Uh, when I came, <laughs> when I, I came back from getting some equipment from a friend, um, and they had Corey's old Dybbuk box and I set everything down and the minute I went to the bathroom, like this blood started pouring out my nose and I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. So, like, and everybody else was in bed, and I didn't want to bother them, so I just sat there um, until it stopped. And, um, you know, everybody was, like, writing to me, are you okay, or whatever. I'm, like, waiting for some, waiting for all these people to, like, call an ambulance for me or something. Oh and, then, uh, and then, this, but the weird thing is, the next day, it happened to Kyler, too, his son. I walked in, and Kyler was having a nosebleed in the uh, living room. Weird. So I'm That's not crazy. sure what caused it, but it's just strange to have two people that don't normally have nosebleeds have one. <laughs> yeah. I would say. So the Dybbuk box, does that come out frequently? I don't know if everybody knows what a Dybbuk box is, but the Dybbuk box is basically like a box that seals up a demon. Am I correct by saying that? It's pretty close. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So does that come out often, or is that something that's only brought out for really special events? Corey used to own it, and it was on the same Dybbuk box. Um, it was on Paranormal Lockdown. 
when Corey had it. Okay. And it, it was on Weak and Weird or something like that. They studied it and uh, did x-rays on it and everything like that. We've used it at different events. And uh, if you notice from the live stream, too, the minute I took it out, you, I was hearing, like, footsteps, a door open upstairs, and then walking, like, all around me uh, on the live stream. And uh, that's exactly what happened on Paranormal Lockdown. The minute they took it out, took it out of the uh, case, mm-hmm. they could hear walking around the building, uh, inside the building. So I thought that was pretty crazy that it had a similar result yeah. here. Yeah. But no, we don't. Um, Corey used to just keep it in his trunk because because Jen would let let him have it. In the house. I don't blame her at <laughs> all. That's that's <laughs> yeah, crazy. Okay, so to go back to the house for a minute, do you feel like a sense of being drawn to the house, perhaps perhaps by the spirits, or like do you feel something that's wanting to keep you there, that's drawing you in there? It does feel like something's drawing me here. Whenever I go um, somewhere, uh, I think about the house a lot and. I like being here. Like, it's comforting. I know it's, I know there's, like, paranormal stuff happening, but it seems weird to say that it's comforting, but it has a comfort feeling to it, like, that I'm home or whatever. I know it's not my home, but it feels like home when I'm here. Well, I think that's very interesting that you say that because, I mean, I've been watching things about Andrea Perrin, and Mm -hmm. if anybody isn't aware, Andrea Perrin was one of the daughters of the Perrin family, and they lived in the house from, was it 71 until 80? And at that point, they just couldn't live in the house anymore. But um, Andrea has been sort of the lead in her family with coming out with the story and, Mm -hmm. you know, telling the truth about what happened in the house when they were all living there. And in most interviews that I see with her, she does talk about having that like feeling that overwhelming feeling of it being home. So I don't know. It's weird because it it makes me think that maybe it's a portal. Maybe it's something that is like basically a time warp. Like what do you feel like it is? Um, It's strange. Like like you mentioned the time warp thing. You'll come here and you'll think it's been, I don't know. It feels like it's been like a day or two. And then you're like, Oh my God, it's been a whole week. Like I need to go get, get stuff done. You know, <laughs> like, I wow. this house. Uh, it's really strange. And we've actually had on um, cameras time skip on it. One, yeah. the middle bedroom, the time will, would say a different time than the rest of the house, hmm. which is, and then it, for a period of time, and then it would go back to regular time, which was really strange. It does have a weird, time is weird here. It really is. I know it's, it sounds crazy to say. I came down just to join, was it exploring with Josh? I came down just to come down for a few days and I wound up staying here for months. Wow. So, yep. Um, yeah. Change of plans. <laughs> That's really cool. Well, I can tell you from the moment that I started watching the live stream to basically now, like, Almost every single night I have a dream about the house. So I can't help but feel like I'm drawn to it as well, as strange as that sounds. It's just like, and it's not a creepy feeling. It's like I'm there with different people that I am very close with. And it's just like a a good feeling. It's, It's weird. Like, it's not like I'm waking up having nightmares about the house. So I don't know. Strange. It's taking all the fun of it for me, okay? Okay, we need to we need to spook things up. <laughs> we need to get into Jen. like the good stuff, okay? We, had, uh, we have groups that have come here like four different times because they're just so attracted to the place. It's crazy. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, when you do your own ghost hunting, is there any type of equipment that you favor, and do you always use the same stuff, or if you're in the house, do you use something different? My big thing is spare boxes. It's kind of what I'm known for. It's kind of why Corey keeps me here. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, that's like my biggest piece of equipment. Um, it was funny because the live stream, my favorite piece of equipment was broken, so I didn't even get to use it. I used um, somebody had just sent me a box to use, and it was one that I never really used that much. And it's the one that you see that they put up on dark zone where the um, spare box. Fell over. Yes. In the middle of the night, that was my spare box. I woke up that morning and I'm like, what the heck is my spare box? And there it is on the floor. I'm like, oh. So I look at the tape and sure enough, I got uh, knocked over. But yeah, mostly I use spare boxes, EVP recorders, you know, basic things. You don't have to get really too fancy to, okay. to make contact. So We have both of those pieces of equipment and we've actually had a lot of luck with using a spare box in the graveyard. So. Mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah. 
There's one method that you guys used a lot at the house that Jen and I are actually going to be on a paranormal ghost type investigator show here soon. Um, and we're dying to try the Estes method. So do yeah. you have any um, tips or tricks for us when we try that out? Oh, wow. Uh, Estes method. Yeah, I've done that um, <laughs> countless number of times. So yeah, I would say like, just make sure you use a spare box that picks up some kind of radio frequency, you know what I mean? Because you don't mm-hmm. want to sit there with static all the time, not saying anything. Right. And, like, how we did in the live stream, we had a extra, um, like, microphone so that people could hear what you were hearing, um, but we couldn't hear the questions, the person using the spirit box. So, basically, you can match it up with whatever is coming out. So, you know, because, so, like, some shows you watch and you're like this is like no way it's like too good to be true you're like you could have could have set it up to where you were answering the tell them what the question was going to be beforehand yeah but this way of that speaker so everybody hears exactly what they're hearing at the same time like we did on the live stream and you know how Corey was like i wrote down happy and he wound up saying happy on the, um just shortly after i wrote it down um that's a good thing to do too is write down words and have the spirits mm-hmm. try to repeat what you wrote down that's a great to, idea yeah. yeah just to confirm that they're there instead of just asking um, random questions and I, and I noticed too when you talk to spirits if you're like okay um like if you say like you like question it like this every time like if you are here say i'm here before. if um you're a male say male you know give them that give them the um the word to say they usually say it better than just asking a random question. Right. Um, okay. That makes any sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. It's kind of like kind of setting them up a little bit to, to be like, this is what we really do want you to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Maybe a weird question, but now that everybody's listening to your voice, um, me and Kim have all, always kind of thought that you've had like a very calming voice. So do you think that that's benefited you, um, like communicating with the spirits? Do you think the fact that you do have a calm voice and you're not like loud and abrupt that they, mm. they want to communicate more with you? Yeah, I've heard people say I have like a steady energy and like, I have, I don't get like overly excited when things happen. So I think, um, I've had a lot of people say that does help, um, like psychics and stuff have told me that, okay. um, or mediums have told me that um, that helps my communication. I'm not like all yelling at them. I'm just kind of acting like we're you know, we're all, like two friends in a room talking, mm-hmm. you know? Right. And uh, yeah, I'm not like pushing for answers or anything like that. So yeah, I think it does help a little bit to stay calm and collective and everything. Mm-hmm. That's great. So. Now that the Heinzens own the house, do you feel like they truly own the house, or do you feel like maybe the spirits still own the house? It's, at times, it you know, I think I know I know spirits. It feels like the spirits respect the Heinzens and they kind of live together. Like when you stay here for long periods of time, it almost feels like you're friends with the spirits. So I think they kind of coexist here. So I think sometimes the spirits try to come out and be like, "Hey, you know, this is my area, this is my place." Sometimes. Um, like that time I heard the voice out loud, you know, they're kind of like saying, Hey, I'm here, you know, right. but I, th- I think the spirits that would have accepted, um, but the Heinz is on the place now and they kind of coexist together. That's really good. Okay. What do you feel are like the most haunted places in the home? I would say the library, the middle bedroom and parts of the basement as well. Okay. But, um, we have a room that's so-called the safe room where we stay in when people investigate, but still things happen in, happen in the safe room as well. So <laughs> the safe room is not yeah. safe. I was gonna say how how yeah. safe is the safe room in a haunted house, really? But <laughs> yeah, so we because <laughs> I was I've slept in the safe room many times and I've had them talk out loud to me hmm. in the middle of the night and wake me up. And I'm just like, can you please go back on the other side of the house? Please respect yeah. my boundaries. I yeah. did not put a welcome mat out here for you. Right. Crazy. Um, but in the library, we get a lot of, we've got video of shadow figure going by, uh, kind of peeking into the um, library. And we've also, I woke up one morning and I don't know if they showed this video or not. On dark zone, we might have. Um, I woke up one morning and there was a book on the floor. And um, I'm like, okay, I don't remember that being there. So I wound the DVR. Sure enough, the book 
like flew off the shelf and landed in the middle of the floor. And um, and then Corey was thinking Corey was here by himself and it happened again. The same book flew off the shelf and it's called Moral Relativity. Okay. Seems like a dry book. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> If the ghost is probably like, um, if you're really bored, you can check yeah. out this book. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there's all kinds of crazy books in that library. So speaking then of you seeing the shadow person or there being footage of a shadow person, which there actually was footage of a shadow mm-hmm. person on the live stream too behind Jen and Corey on the sofa there. Have you yeah. ever seen what people call the bent neck lady? I haven't. <laughs> I haven't seen her. Um I know there was a group here with an SLS camera um, that caught her on film in the basement trying to hold her neck up. So that was kind of interesting. But I personally haven't. I've seen the the shadow figure before. Okay. When I was I was just sitting in the safe room watching Netflix, and, uh, and the door was open to the other side of the house, and I kind of looked over and I saw it there. Just um, it didn't really have a form to it. It was just kind of like a big black mass, and I was just there. And I'm, I looked at it for a few seconds, and like, oh my god! So I just kind of looked away, and then looked back, and it was gone. And I'm like, okay, it was just checking on me to see who I was or who was there. Oh, that's really interesting. I think like it's a good method. Just be like, if I just look away for a second, maybe I'll like <laughs> pretend like I don't see it. It'll just go away. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like that when I, you know how. I think they showed the video of the lights that were going off everywhere. Yeah. Well, I was in the middle bedroom trying to sleep upstairs, and those lights actually come up, come up, and they make a pop sound, and then it'd go a little further, make another pop sound, go a little further. Light, they'd light up the whole room, and I closed my eyes because I was kind of, I was kind of scared of it to be honest. And I closed my eyes, and it lights up my whole eyes like you're, you know, like you're looking at a flashlight or something. Your eyes closed. And, I, and then it just went away. So, yeah, that was yeah. pretty intense. <laughs> I have heard that there's, like, a lot of flashing lights, which is, I think, completely different from orbs. Um, but that's also a weird phenomenon that happens just in the house. Mm-hmm. It's just flashing lights and everything. So if you could put a number on how many spirits you think are in the house, how many do you think there would be? I'm not sure. Like, they usually say 10 in the spirit box. Okay. That's usually what they tell me, just about every time. Sometimes more, sometimes a little less, but usually 10. I know when um, exploring with Josh was here, it said like 48 or something, like perfectly clear. And I'm like, oh, wow. 48. Huh? Crazy. That. Wow. That's a party. That yeah, is a big a spirit whole, party. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> okay. Do you yeah. feel like the house is a portal in that sense? Like, especially after you guys have so many people coming and investigating, do you feel like it just kind of opens the door for anybody and anything to come in as far as the paranormal? Um, I believe so. And I believe sometimes people who come to investigate um, might bring stuff with them too. Mm-hmm. Um, that stays behind for a little while. Right. Um, yeah. So I think it does kind of open up to more activity. It also depends on who's here. Like we could get, um, we get a group here and like nothing happened. And then the next people are just have plenty of energy and they're just, you know, you can just feel that they're have a good energy about them and you get all kinds of stuff happens all night. So I think so it's it depends like spirits on the person are picking. too. Yeah. They're kind of picking and choosing. I wonder how the guy that's at the house right now is making out. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I was just in there making a pizza. And was in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh he was God. trying out uh, a Phasma box app or something like that. Okay. Um, All right. Um, but he hasn't got anything crazy so far. Okay. <laughs> who do you um? Who do you think this the swearing ghost is? Do you think it's somebody that died recently, or somebody like an old spirit? I say based on the vocabulary, maybe it's recent, but it's hard to say. I think it's one that follows me because I can um, it's about every place I've been to or lived I'll ask him to swear and it sounds like the same voice he's swearing every time so I believe it's some spirit that's following me oh Um, you have a friend yeah yeah you you have a clinger a stage five five. yeah (laughs) 
That's Corey's thing. He always says that. So see, that's, that's funny. funny. Um, I do have a couple of questions in regards to like how people can actually go and do their own investigation at the house. How can people find out information about that? Um, just go to www.theconjuringhouse.com. Okay. And, and it's like an can... online booking system or something, right? Yep. Or go on the farm, uh, the farm on Round Top Road. The farm um, on, on Round Top. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. That's great. We do have a question here uh, that came through on the chat. Amanda wants to know, how many times a week do you break out the spirit box? Uh, depends um, on if people are here or um, I like to do it like twice a week. I used to be crazy and do it like almost every day. But, <laughs> but yeah, like twice a week, maybe for a short period of time. Like most videos you see on my YouTube, I... I might have done like 15, 20 minutes at the most. Okay. Um, okay. Because after that, it kind of tends to fade away. Like your energy does and whatever's around you kind of fades away. That connection just isn't quite as strong anymore. Right. And when, when you get a connection, it's crazy. Like I was at the castle yesterday and I'm sitting in the spare box and I just like completely forgot what they had said on the spare box. I forgot that people were even in the room with me. And I turned around, and there's like 10, 15 people behind me, and I'm just like, oh, my God, I forgot people were here. <laughs> so, wow. Um, it's really strange, yeah. How do you say your sleep is? Like, do you sleep through the night? Like, when you stay there, are you, like, sleeping peacefully? Do you wake up, like, at the same time every night? Do you get woken up by things often? Like, how's the sleep going? That's what I want to know. I don't know, like the live stream when I sleep four hours a night or something. Oh. But, um, like, Jen was saying, um, Heinzen was saying um, to me the other day, she's like, because uh, my girlfriend says I sleep like all the time at her house. Like I fall asleep instantly for some reason. Just catching up. <laughs> but when I'm, here, when I'm here, I sleep four hours a night. Like I'll be going, I'll go to bed at like two or three and everybody else gets up wicked early, like six, seven. And I'll just get up with them wide awake. It's the weirdest thing. And I don't even get tired. Hmm. Wow. There's a lot of action going on in there. Keep me awake. Re- that's really weird. It's like you would think that a house that is supposedly that haunted would actually drain your energy, but it seems to recharge you. So hmm. that's that's not typical. Maybe there is 48 uh, ghosts in there and they're just like <laughs> pumping you up. Like it's a big party. Like they're like, this guy wants to hang. So we're just going to like, we're in it to win it. <laughs> Here you go. Wake up, boy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So when you're. You on the spirit box. Yeah, yeah. bring up the spirit box we want to chat. Um, I do wonder, because Jen and I were talking about the live stream over the past few episodes that we've done, just kind of here and there. And we both made the comment, like, how does somebody stay in the house by themselves? Mm -hmm. Whether it's, like, at night or in the morning. Like, how do you go back and make the bed after you've slept in it all night after being, like, semi-terrified? And then being like, oh, yeah, that ball actually did roll across the room. How am I going to continue to make the bed? Like, how do you get the courage to do that? I don't know. I don't really, nothing really scares me. I don't know. I don't know. I've had some crazy things happen, and it just doesn't scare me. Um, I had I have a video I haven't even put out yet where uh, I'm in the, the, the uh, safe room. <laughs> quotation marks. Safe room. Yeah, exactly. Um, the TV shuts off, and I'm just like, oh, I better grab my phone because I think something's going to happen. So I grab my phone, start recording, um, and then I hear the door move just a little bit, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, are you behind the door? And then nothing happens, nothing happens, and then um, it just slams, like, super hard, and I'm just like, oh, that was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's like, I'm going to go behind the door and see what's behind there. So I kind of went behind there, and nothing was there. So I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't scare me anymore. Um, That's good. Okay. Yeah. That's really good. We also have another question that just came through on the chat. While you're having your lovely four hours of sleep, <laughs> do you ever experience any crazy dreams? Um, I do. I've had. Ooh. I had a dream one night. Bill. Bill was here sleeping. I don't know if he heard me or not. And I screamed like I never screamed in my sleep, and I screamed in my sleep. And it woke me out of a dead sleep, and I just I couldn't remember what happened. I knew I, I could remember it was something to do with the house, but I just couldn't remember. So I've had dreams like that, uh, but I have a hard time remembering what I dreamt about. 
Right. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I don't have that problem. As soon as I wake up, I can write a book about the crazy dreams that I had. But yeah, that's really cool. So John, what you should, you should have a little notebook next to your yeah. bed. And then when Write you wake up, be like, what happened then? And what happened right before that? And then you could piece the whole story together. Yeah. I should try that. <laughs> you should. Can I ask one more thing? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Because I love the scary stuff and that's like my obsession. What would you say is like the scariest thing that's happened to you personally that you really felt kind of like you wanted to run, but you didn't obviously because you're strong and you stayed, but what what happened to you that was like the worst scariest thing? I guess the scariest thing I had happen was it was when I was a kid. Actually, I went out. Uh, we lived in a haunted house, um, and it's two scary, really scary things that stand out. And I was only like five or six. I still remember them very clearly. Uh, my mom had woke me up out of sleep because she was scared, and we come out to the to the living room. And I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. But in the living room was these shadows going around in circles. In the kitchen, you could hear, like, it sounded like feet dragging across the floor. And they kept going around in circles, around in circles, feet dragging, dragging for, like, uh, I don't know, five minutes or so. And then it went away. And then another time, I had gone to the bathroom as a kid, and there's a window in the shower um, area. And I saw these, like, arms. Um, Arms kind of like spinning around. Does that make sense around each other? Yeah. No, that's terrifying. (laughs) And I just stood there. I couldn't scream, couldn't move. I just stood there and had to watch it until it just finally went away. And uh, and I remember telling uh, people about it as a kid and that I was crying because I was petrified. And uh, we wound up moving out of that house because it uh, was pretty bad. Um, There was three people that burned to death across the street. Uh, and I guess mm. that's when everything started happening that at our it. house. Wow. That's, and that's an awful way to go. Yeah. yeah. But I guess maybe those things is what, that kind of like molded you into the investigator you are today because you were scared at a very young age and you just sucked it up and kept on going and just <laughs> maybe really <laughs> drew you in. <laughs> well, what really got me into it was, um, I mean, stuff happened all through life, but I moved into an apartment in Auburn, Maine, um, and I didn't know anything paranormal happened there or anything. I didn't even know anything about the house, I mean, the apartment. And I went, I was working at the YMCA at the time, and I went there, and the guys told me that's where I moved to, and I told them, they said, come and come. He's like, you live there? And I'm like, look. He's like, look it up online. So I looked it up, and oh my God, like, um, a, uh, child that was putting me up and then burnt to death. What? What? By your stepdad. Oh, man. And uh, they wrote a book about it called Lucifer's Child. Um, and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe I moved into this place, you know? That's so, crazy. So yeah, you lived so there. That just one nice. day I'm recording on my phone. Um, I was just recording something. I don't know, I can't remember what I was recording, but I played it back. And a voice says, John, you want to talk? And I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, I'm like Okay. I would not have said okay, but go on. I would (laughs) have. So it got to the point where I bought a voice recorder and I'd have like friends come over and we'd sit there and do EVPs and get EVPs as well every time. That's crazy. That led to the spare box and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, In the spare box sessions, they were crazy. Like I could just turn it on and they would answer just about everything I asked. Wow. Jen and I both at a young age were more into Ouija boards and um, I definitely had some experiences that frightened me. Have you used a Ouija board? You probably did during the live stream, but have you used it often at all and had anything really cool happen? I've used them several times. I've never had anything bad happen. Um, I remember I had like an old man come through and he was saying all these things. I can't remember what he was saying. He was calling me something or other. I didn't even know what the meaning meant. Until I asked somebody, and it was like, oh, that's like a, uh, a gay reference to an older man and a younger guy or something. I'm like, I had no idea. <laughs> like, So that was kind of odd. He yeah, um, had the hot for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I think laughs> Maybe it's the swearing guy again with that vocabulary. It's really on it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's wild. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I had no idea even what it meant. And I'm talking to somebody, and they're like, you don't know what that means? And I'm like, no, I have no idea. And it, it, it goes to show, too, that, like, some people say, oh, you kind of, like, control the Ouija board with your mind. And if you didn't even know what the word was, I think that's yeah. pretty good evidence and proof that something was coming through. Yeah. Corey and I had a Ouija board once, and Corey um, was standing behind me holding up numbers, and then the person... Uh, in front of me was watching me on the board and uh, asking the spirits to spell the, num- the, the numbers and it would and it was doing <laughs> Corey's like what like Corey held up his middle finger and it went to one <laughs> and he's like what he's like <laughs> he's like it really they really can see us I guess he's sort of that is away. so cool yeah wow I well, I know that you, um, yeah, we definitely need to go to the conjuring house and unfortunately the borders are closed here for a while, but yeah. when they open, you can guarantee that we're coming down to Rhode Island for a visit. When do they open? Do I don't know. know. Hopefully <laughs> soon. Cause I'm super excited. It might be the fall. Right. I don't know. Oh, look, Bill, Bill's actually on the chat right now. He asked what we're drinking. Bill, we are drinking <laughs> mint juleps. Close. Yeah. Not a Moscow mule. Mint, mint julep. Same kind of cat. <laughs> and well, it's funny. I know you wanted to ask me about Dark Zone, how I get affiliated with them, but well, what it was, I've been living here at the house, and um, Bill has two of, we both have off and on, but um, I didn't, Dark Zone didn't even contact me or anything. They contacted Bill, and they had the Heinzens. I just happened to be here. <laughs> Oh, awesome. So I, had, I didn't have a contract or anything. Everybody else did. So I just kind of just kind of did my thing. Um, Corey and Jen said, go ahead, go for it. So, um, yeah, that's how I I went on to, to the live stream. I was in the uh, – I don't know if I was supposed to or not, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like you have a lot of uh, new friends and fans because of yeah. it. Like I checked out your I, – I subscribed to you on YouTube and – I was like, Jen, he's got like 7.8 thousand followers right now. Like, he's definitely got some following. You're getting up there. Yeah, I know. When we went live, I got like, it was crazy. Like, dumb me is like, hey, anybody who wants to add me on Facebook, go ahead. And then all of a sudden, there's like thousands of friend requests. I'm, like, right. <laughs> yeah, you so hit like, fame oh, pretty quickly. Like, yeah. You probably don't want to be friends with a lot of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them were from like Latin America. Oh, okay. Crazy. Okay. All right. Well, I guess um, there's quite I think, a following there. Because somebody leaked it, like they leaked it onto YouTube. Oh. There was a guy that did it, and he had like 8.5 million views. They finally caught him and shut the YouTube down. But um, I think that's how a lot of them are watching. Um, let's do that. So. Wow. Okay. That's wild. Um, we have one more question from one of our viewers. Stacy wants to know, are there any particular times that the paranormal activity is higher? Yeah, it does seem a little, it's definitely, def, uh, it's definitely a different feeling here at nighttime. Okay. I would say most of the stuff where the stuff has been moved and things like that is like early morning, like mm-hmm. three, four. Okay. You know, okay. Between three and seven a.m. is when the stuff has moved, like the ball came off the radiator, the block, the the doors opening and stuff like that. It's always been around the time. Um, let me go back to the DVR and check it out, see what time. It's usually between 3 and 7 a.m. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, 3, they say, is that, like, magical uh-huh. hour. Right. You just did a live from a really cool castle, which anybody wants to go check that out, it's now on YouTube. So what do you have, like, lined up in the calendar for the next little while? Um, I have a few locations um, lined up. I'm not going to say exactly where. I don't want to give it out yet. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's great. So if people want to find out more about you and follow your really great videos on YouTube, where can they find all your good stuff? Um, you can just go on, just look up my name, John Huntington, on uh, YouTube, and it should show up. Um, there's a page it's like called Huntington. Yep. It's on Facebook. All right. There's like a Team Papa John out there somewhere too. So I don't <laughs> yeah. Know <laughs> What's really funny too is I actually got a delivery in the mail the other day from the whole live stream when there was like a draw and everything, and uh, I got a Papa John onesie. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, I did. It was mailed to me. I was like, oh, maybe so I should cool. wear it for the live event, and I'm like, no, I'm gonna pass this this one time. 
Joe that's on the chat. He wants to know, did we ever find out what hit the camera in the library on the second night of the live stream? The audio was effed up for the rest of the stream after that. Oh, yeah. No, we looked and we looked everywhere in there, and there's nothing that fell. Um, the only thing I saw that could have fell was, like, there's a remote to the camera. Okay. But it, even if that fell, it wouldn't have moved the camera at all. It's just, like, this little tiny thing. Uh, but, no, we couldn't figure out what hit that camera. Okay. So it's a mystery. Um, we have a black cat that's trying to take over the live stream right yeah. now. His name's Ernie. So to all of our people watching, sorry about that. <laughs> He really wants to be on here. Well, John, got to say thank you so much for your time tonight. Yeah. And we're really sorry that things didn't work out the way we had planned. But thankfully, you're still able to uh, answer all the questions that we had for you. So thank you so much. We very much appreciate it. Sorry, it was such a struggle. <laughs> it's okay. And we can't wait to come visit. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll make up for it when we come to visit. Yeah. It was so nice talking to you. And I'm sure we'll be talking to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 All right, guys. So there we have it. John does have a sexy voice. <laughs> yes, Heather, he does, right? It's very, it's very calming. Like we said, it's just, it's very like maybe the ghosts like to hang out with him and talk to him because they're just like, this guy's really cool. Like, other than they got to swear us, but you know. right, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thanks, Aaron. We had a lot of fun interviewing. So you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for putting up with us with this live stream. <laughs> and uh, like I said, we'll post it to Booze and Bourbon as well. And uh, you guys have a great night. We're going to have a nightcap. Cheers. Cheers. And guys, you can, of course, find us on any uh, lovely podcast app or any app that allows you to listen to podcasts. We are there for you to listen. We're also on Facebook, Booze and Bourbon, the podcast. We're also on Instagram. And occasionally from time to time, we're on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You can also find us on Patreon. So it's patreon.com backslash booze and bourbon. We have some new patrons as well. So next month we'll be doing our patron shout out with all of our new patrons. We cannot thank you guys enough. You guys all have some stuff coming to you in the mail. So be on the lookout for things that say they're from booze and bourbon in Nova Scotia, Canada. Some super cool jazz guys. Yes. And also, if you want to purchase any of our fan gear or any of our bourbon or paranormal wear, you can definitely check us out at boozeandbourbon.redbubble.com. It's quite exciting, guys. And I won't lie, I'm just very patiently awaiting the arrival of my purchases that I got off of the site as well. I am not patient. I go to my mailbox every stinking day and I'm like, I'm really where trying. is it? Canada Post, you're failing me. Yes, we need it immediately. It says that it was shipped like a long time ago. So Canada Post, you're messing with my flow. Yeah. Hmm. All right, guys. Well, next week, you'll have an all new episode of Booze and Bourbon. So make sure you tune in next Friday for that brand new release. Thanks again. We love you all. Booze and Bourbon is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to advertise on the show, please head over to abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.